Let's chat today about keeping your dog's teeth clean. I'll be covering why caring for and cleaning dog's teeth is important, the type of cleaning you may try to avoid, and the five ways of maintaining your dog's dental hygiene, yes, including toothbrushing. Hi and welcome or welcome back to my Golden Doodle Diary. I'm Joanna and I'm here with my sweet Golden Doodle dog, Sophie. This channel is about Golden Doodles, Groodles, Doodle Dogs and general dog care. If this kind of doggy chat is your thing, consider subscribing. It sure makes a big difference to this channel. And if you get value from what you hear, please leave us a like to show your support. So let's get back on track. Now, a little disclaimer, I haven't been as attentive to Sophie's teeth as I should be. But now she's five years old, I can't take her canine dental health for granted. And I've been upping my game. Sophie's gums are still nice and pink, but she does have a tendency to get plaque on her teeth. Unfortunately, poodles and poodle mixers, like golden doodles, aren't known for having fabulous teeth. They are more likely than other dogs to develop dental problems. Without adequate care and cleaning, problems begin with the buildup of bacteria on the teeth, which can lead to plaque or tartar, bad breath and infection of the teeth and gums. That's when you notice your dog has difficulty chewing and eating, not because it's become a fussy eater, but because it's too sore for it to eat. In the worst case scenario, tooth extraction may be needed. I know some of you regularly take your dog to the vet for a dental clean. You may figure that you yourself go to the dentist for professional tooth cleaning, so why not take your dog? Well, it may be necessary to do this, but here's why you may want to try and avoid this procedure for your dog, if you can. To keep the dog still and to enable the vet to actually get the job done, your dog needs to have an anaesthetic. Not just a numbing local anaesthetic, but we're talking the full, completely going under general anaesthetic, like for an operation. While the dental procedure is very straightforward, it's the anaesthetic itself that is a serious undertaking, because it isn't without its health risks, especially in older dogs. Of course, your vet would give your dog a pre-surgical examination and blood testing to make it as safe as possible. And look, again, if it must be done, it must be done. But it's quite an extreme thing to do to your dog every few years. So it's a good idea to get more proactive about your dog's teeth so a professional clean by the vet isn't needed, or at least isn't needed as often. So just quickly, what do we look for in healthy dog teeth? Well, not only should the teeth themselves be lovely and white, but the gums should have a nice, slightly pink colour. And if you're seeing any gum inflammation, redness, bleeding, or if your dog's breath smells horrible, it's time for it to be checked out by a vet. Now, if you're here to find out about brushing your dog's teeth, don't worry, we'll get to that as well. But as far as maintaining healthy dog teeth, I like to do all that I can so that the dog does most of the teeth cleaning work, rather than it being a manual toothbrushing task for me. So now let's look at the five ways of maintaining healthy, clean dog teeth and my thoughts and personal experiences with these methods. When you take it right back to out there in wild nature, it seems all naturally occurring canine dental health stems from dogs chewing on their prey and especially on bones. It's how they'd grind away any plaque and massage their gums to naturally keep their teeth clean and strong. Just think of those wild dogs out there with their perfect white teeth. And although my Sophie looks completely unrelated to those rugged dogs, she is after all the same species. So when she was a pup, I looked into giving her bones to chew. I searched for info about bones online and found a lot of conflicting information. Some people swear by giving their dogs bones, showing how even their old dogs can have pristine white teeth with this method. But other people share some very different stories. 
there are instances when tiny bone splinters lodge in the soft tissues of the esophagus, throat or windpipe. Or the splinter could lodge in the dog's stomach, causing an obstruction, and worst case scenario, cause a life-threatening medical emergency. The biggest consensus I found about bones is that if you do give them to your dog, they must be raw rather than cooked, because cooked bones have a higher tendency to splinter. So with dental health in mind, I moved past the potential risks and decided to try giving Sophie a few different types of raw bones. When she was still a pup, I gave her a raw chicken wing to chew on, but she immediately swallowed it whole. Knowing about the possibility of a stomach obstruction, my own stomach turned with stress. As it happens, Sophie was perfectly fine, but I didn't want to do that to myself again. Besides, the whole aim was for her to use her teeth, so chicken wings were obviously too small for her and were off the menu. Then I gave her a raw chicken carcass and Sophie loved it, but I still found it hard occasionally hearing her gulp down a big chunk. It was also messy and sticky on her coat, and frankly, she'd need a bath each time she ate one. I decided that overall, I'm probably being too precious about bones and tried again. I gave her a fresh, human food grade lamb shank bone. As it happens, Sophie chewed it for a little bit, but lost interest after a few minutes. I thought it would be a waste to throw the bone away so quickly, so I put it in the fridge and gave it to her the next day. Then I repeated the same thing a few more times. I thought about dogs that chew on old bones, bury them, dig them up and chew them some more. So I thought, no big deal, and put Sophie's bone in the fridge in between goes. Well, that ended with a trip to the vet, but bone splinters weren't the problem. Rather, it's her less than robust digestive system. Another hallmark, by the way, of poodles and poodle mixes. Apparently, when Sophie's bone was no longer fresh, it had too much bacteria for her gut to handle. So she vomited so many times, I had to take her to the vet. She was kept overnight on a drip to treat dehydration from vomiting so much. I later also found out that some people caution against giving bones that are too hard. These are called load-bearing bones, like leg bones, which aren't easily chewed through the way, say, chicken wings might be. That's because the hardness may cause tooth fractures. So that's about the time I threw in the towel with raw bones altogether for Sophie. She's no power chewer and I had to look at other teeth cleaning methods for her. Ultimately, it's up to you if you choose to give your dog raw bones or not. If you do, and especially if you have a golden doodle or another dog with a sensitive stomach, ensure the bones you give it are always fresh. Luckily, Sophie is food orientated, so I decided to give her maximum crunch opportunities in her daily food intake. This is another passive way from the point of view of the owner of cleaning dog's teeth. I feed her premium dry dog kibble with the crunchiest vegetable I can think of, carrot. This is a pretty good combination for her and is her staple diet. And as it happens, the crunchy carrot does make a big difference to her dental health. One time when carrots weren't available for a few weeks, I noticed she was getting awful breath. And when I reintroduced the carrot soon after, the bad breath went away. Giving your dog food chews is another powerful method of cleaning dog's teeth. Self-cleaning, of course. If your dog isn't particularly enthused about bones or chew toys, but is food orientated, this is another good possibility. And it's generally cleaner than a meaty bone. There are two main subtypes of food chews. The first is dried food chews, such as pig's ears and hocks and dehydrated bones. Or for smaller dogs, bully sticks. Think of relatively big, chunky things that take a while for the dog to chew through, so it can help remove any plaque buildup on the teeth and massage your dog's gums in the process. Because they are dried, these food chews are quite hard. 
From researching these though, there is potentially a risk of the dog biting off and swallowing a big shark bit that may get lodged in its system, just like bone splinters. And some sources say to avoid giving these and any other hard things like those load-bearing bones I mentioned because they may cause tooth fractures. And again, people who have given their dogs dried food chews for years and years will swear by them. And others will talk about those unfortunate occasions when bits got lodged. Now, the other type of food chews is dental chews. These are relatively softer than the hard dry food chews. They contain formulations that don't rely so much on the mechanical action of scraping off plaque. The idea is that the dog bites into the soft dental chew and this coats its teeth with the formulation. It's this that reduces plaque and tartar buildup, helps maintain healthy gums and freshens the dog's breath. What's been my experience with these for Sophie? At one time, I was giving her a dental chew every day. Even though I gave the largest size chew available, she only bit it a few times and swallowed the rest. So I don't think there was much chance of her teeth being coated. And because the chews I gave her were green, well, afterwards, let's say there was green poop coming out the other end. So I just stepped back from giving them. But again, you make your choice about what you give to your dog and how your dog reacts to it. The other alternative to bones is chew toys or dental toys. These are typically rubber or nylon toys infused with food smells such as chicken or beef to make them more appealing. Here you're in luck if your dog is a power chewer. You may not see it that way if your dog chews destructively on things around your house. But if you can manage through repetitive training to redirect your dog's attention to focus on dental chew toys, you've got your dog cleaning its own teeth. As for Sophie, she never had much of a tendency to chew on anything that wasn't food after she got her adult teeth. It may not look like much, but this footage is actually quite rare for Sophie. Here she is chewing the nylon bone she's mostly ignored since she was a pup. Before I go on with the last dog tooth cleaning method, if you found this video useful so far, please take a second to give it a thumbs up to help this channel. As far as I'm concerned, if you can manage to use only the previous four methods for cleaning your dog's teeth and keeping them healthy, that's ideal. As if golden doodles weren't already high maintenance enough for what with those coats, toothbrushing is just another chore and another eye-rolling thing your dog puts up with. But in Sophie's case, she does need extra help. So we incorporate dog toothbrushing into her routine. She's never thrilled about it, but she does put up with it. As with everything in dog care, nail clipping, ear cleaning, hair trimming, the biggest challenge up front is familiarising the dog with the activity, effectively another layer of dog training. Little by little, get your dog used to having a toothbrush in its mouth, brushing lightly against its teeth and gums. Associate it with plenty of praise and a nice flavour. Start with very short sessions, a few seconds long, and progress gradually. The toothbrush needn't be a special toothbrush just for dogs. I just use one of my old ones for Sophie. It has soft bristles that gently massage her gums. The long handle gives good access to the hard to reach spots. Use the toothbrush you find easiest to use and that suits the size of your dog's mouth. If you like, you can also get a finger toothbrush, a finger pad or other implements from the pet store. But I still think that familiarising your dog with the sensation of having their teeth brushed is the most important because granted, toothbrushing feels a bit weird for them at the start. The actual type of toothbrush or implement you use probably isn't that vital. As for the toothpaste, I once bought a commercial chicken flavoured dog toothpaste, but surprisingly, Sophie didn't like it one bit. I thought she hated the toothbrushing itself, but it was the toothpaste she rejected. So there's a tip right there. With a food-orientated dog like Sophie, I now take it as an opportunity to give her dietary supplements on her toothbrush. 
You could also create your own version of dog toothpaste. Just mix half a teaspoon of coconut oil and a teaspoon of baking soda or bicarb soda. What I do is wet the toothbrush and dip it in a bit of dried kelp or the coconut oil paste. Sophie registers this as enough of a food reward to put up with the toothbrushing. The actual toothbrushing technique is essentially the same as brushing your own teeth. Just don't forget to brush on the insides of the teeth as well as on the outsides. And even when your dog does get used to toothbrushing, give it a few pauses in between brushing sessions, the way your dentist does with you. So as you can see, you need to weigh up the risks and benefits of all these methods. And you need to see how your particular dog reacts too. The reality is, if you are not proactive about these things, your dog is much more likely to get bad teeth. If you'd like more tips on golden doodles and dog care in general, have a look at the videos on the screen. Please show your support by subscribing and liking, and we will see you again next time. Bye for now.